All right, the first thing we're gonna do is right click on the screen and go to Setup Menu. From here, we're gonna go to Network and go to the Network tab. We're gonna change Static IP to Dynamic IP. The reason that we do this is that it enables the IP Detect button, which will talk to the router and fill in most of this information down here for you. When that's done, what we wanna do is change it from Dynamic back to Static. By doing that, it'll lock these numbers into place and it'll also allow you to customize it for your job specifically. A quick tip that I like to do is take the IP address that the router just gave us and change the last three digits to 211. This will put us out of the DHCP range of the router and avoid a lot of problems in the future. The subnet mask we can almost always leave alone and the gateway is the number that we get into the router with. That's an important number to have. The gateway number is what we're going to use in Internet Explorer to get into the router to forward our ports. So write down that gateway number. Another quick tip is these DNS server numbers. If they come out with a 192 or a 0, they are incorrect and it will not work. Sometimes the router and the DVR will not talk correctly and this will happen. It's fine. All you have to do is go to the help screen and go to the second page over and we provide three of them for you. And they're right here. So write down these numbers, at least two of them, the first two. As you can see, it's 168-126-63.1 and 168-126-63.2. Write them down and let's go ahead and input them in right here. The mobile port 9010 we're going to leave alone. The web port 80 we're going to change from 80 to 8245. The reason that we're doing this is that a lot of states in America block port 80, so we change it to 8245 to avoid those problems in the future. If you go to the help screen and go to the second screen over, we do tell you just that. Web port 80 sometimes does get blocked by your internet service provider. If that happens, change it to 8245. Now what you want to do is write down the IP address of the DVR, which is 192.168.1.211. You're going to write down the ports, which is 9010 and 8245. And you're going to use that gateway, 192.168.1.1, to get into the router. Hit save, hit yes, and then we're off to the router. All right, we want to open Internet Explorer. And now we're going to type in that gateway that we got from the DVR. In this case, for this Netgear router, it's 192.168.1.1. For Netgear routers, the username is admin, and the password is password. We're gonna hit okay. We wanna look on the left side of the screen and we wanna go to port forwarding, port triggering. We're gonna click on that. What we want to do is add a custom service. We're going to give it a name. It can be DVR, DVR1, VMAX. It's really up to you. We want to make sure we use both TCP and UDP. That's very important. And now we're going to put in our ports. So first we'll put in 9010 through 9010. And we're going to type in the IP address of the DVR. In this case, it's 211. We're going to hit save. And now we're going to add a second custom port for the other port. So let's hit it again. Let's give it a different name, DVR2, anything but the name you just put in there. Again, make sure it's TCP and UDP. And now we're gonna do 8245 through 8245. And again, put in 211 for the IP address of the DVR. And that's how you port forward on a Netgear router. It's really not that bad. Now you wanna go back to the network screen in the DVR and go to DDNS. We're gonna check use DDNS here. And again, we're gonna change that web port to 8245, very important. This time it gives you the option right here. Now we're gonna give the DVR a name. 
Again, the name is completely up to you. I mean, I'm just putting in VMAX right now, but you can type in anything you want, your customer's address. When you hit check start, it's gonna go to our server farm and see if that name is available. If that name is available, you get a message back saying, success, you're good to go. All you'd have to do is hit save. If it's not available, all you have to do is go back in, you'll get a failure message. All you have to do is go back in, change the name a little bit, maybe add a number or two, and you should be good to go. From here, again, you can hit check start. Once you have a success, you hit save, and that's how you port forward a Netgear router with a VMAX DVR. It's really that easy.